This is the Earth, our planet, our only planet, the one we all love, but at the same time are so ignorant about how we are destroying it. Our definitions of lifestyle and progress need a lot of questioning. And unless we do that, we might end up not leaving anything for our future generations. But amidst all the darkness, there are always a few lamps which constantly endeavor to spread the light through their commitment, dedication and unshakable conviction. Our guest for today's inspiration series is a mechanical engineer by qualification whose love for nature and the wild led him to establish Nature Club Surat. In over 25 years of his journey, he has been instrumental in raising tremendous awareness about nature in and around our city through his every action, be it his activities or the design of his own home. So let's hear from this jewel of our city and nation, Mr. Snehal Patel. I 
bios found of thinking for the nature landscapes, photography, wildlife, and uh, that place gave me a very good opportunity. On one side, there was the ocean, just 10 kilometers away. On the other side, 10 kilometers away, was the Western Park Rainforest, Amunde Forest, where there is the second highest rainfall after Cheram, Cheram. So all my holidays and uh, weekend I used to spend over there. I had a bicycle. I used to cycle down 3 kilometers to the mountains. Spend full day over there. Come back next day to camping over there. And that time even getting a good tent was uh, very difficult. So I used to spend uh, in the open. And uh, one very good uh, Incident has happened over there. How many of you have heard about Romulus White Sir, so, no. yes, no. The snake man of India. Yeah. He was an American settled down in India in Chennai. And uh, if anyone of you have seen the Chennai snake park, he was founder of that. And uh, one day while I was in the Western Ghat forest, uh, drinking on a water stream, I saw one uh, person running after something. Then one white white person running after something. <laughs> I also started running. <laughs> and then he pulled something out. It was a small lock or something. But that lock turned out to be a king for that. <laughs> Around 17 feet long snake. It can come up to your eyes. But it is very good. It is a wonderful snake, one of the five deadly poison snakes from the field. And there is no anti venom also for that snake. But my hobby was uh, I used to know all this, so I was not scared. And that day, we became friends. You were also surprised that all of this Indian doing over here. Because nobody goes into a in forest alone in those times. And so I was spending more time in nature over there, although I was doing my engineering. Engineering I was studying just enough to get passing marks and get out. But when I came back to Surat in 1984, I found this city very well. After spending so much time, five years, that time engineering was five years. And after spending so much time in nature, Surat was so dull for me. Luckily, we found uh, two other persons who were interested in all this and we started Nature of Soul. That was way back in 1994. Uh, I'll just show you some of the activities we are doing through Nature of Soul. One of the activities we are doing is the uh, breeding years, ungulates in Vashtra National Park. Uh, most of you must have visited Vastra National Park. Uh, we have a small place inside the National Park. And just like uh, Snail Bai told, uh, for the last 30 years we had been enjoying Dami Forest. We were having the natural education camps over there. I was uh, getting my happiness by going to Dami Forest. After 30 years, I also thought that I should give something back to this forest. And uh, in the forest, all the wildlife is missing, although the forest is there. Even the birds are missing, because children you, you scatter for it and kill them and eat them. And earlier the tribal people hunted down all the herdivores, chikar, sambar. There are four types of the herdivores used to be there in those forest areas. Chelsea, Rakin, Deer, Sambar and uh, Spotted Deer. But as they are not there, the leopard population increased. And now we have leopards moving away from the forest area. And you see leopards, uh, even in Russia, when leopard is there, one leopard was uh, caught few days, a uh, few months back from Khajur. And then there are leopards around Pardoli, Yara, and outside. Why? Because they don't have food in the forest. So, with this project, we are trying to reintroduce uh, uh, herbivores into the forest so leopards don't have to go out in search of food. 
we bring uh, surplus animals from the area of the of Gujarat. They are transported inside the overnight with special boxes. And then the offspring, the cycle of spring, we don't allow them to come in contact of human beings. Even feeding is done remotely. We just put the food inside the enclosure without human beings going inside. That is how uh, they learn to uh, be afraid of humans. Otherwise, uh, if you go and feed them, they will be like fat dogs. So, after the second generation grows up, we release them back into the wild. And this project was started around the years back without any support from uh, any government agencies. We had uh, raised for your funds from our landmark or land research and so we were made wedding started every step we had hurdles because the uh, wildlife any animal wild animal is property of Austin. Even if we want to move the animal from Surat Zoo to Mashta we need permission from the principal chief of the Rajaram Nandita. But the letter can go directly to him. The letter first goes to Ava, that is nearest office, then the letter goes to Walsan, and then it goes to Nandita. Every step we have to follow. It takes one month for the letter to move from one office to the other. After two months, it comes after follow, it comes after two months to Ava. Each position takes four to five months. This is how our government runs. And uh, luckily, we are able to raise 15 years back into the world. And this is the only project run by an NGO in India. In Gujarat itself, there are another nine near wedding centers operated by the Gujarat Forest Department. But none of them has been. Uh, they have been successful in taking care of them and they are now ready to use the air into the body. We are going to do that. Next. This was the project for the Vulture and the Vulture project. Uh, as you may be aware, Vulture, the boss, that population has uh, reduced by 98 to 99 percent. Luckily, in Russia, there, is, there were uh, 80 to 90 Vultures. But they were not getting food because uh, whenever some cattle die, the chamar will take them away, remove the hide, remove the meat. The roadside, the meat stall, uh, people go and eat over there, chicken and other things, but actually they are eating adulterated uh, cow and buffalo. It is all mixed together. We don't know all this, but uh, it is happening. So in Hajira area, we were. Uh, Spreading these vultures. Vulture died because of a particular medicine used by veterinary doctors, diclofenac. When cattle are injected, diclofenac it is a painkiller. And if that cattle dies and if vultures eat those uh, dead cattle, they would also get a uh, problem for cow and then they used to die. But uh, we had uh, made the sepals aware of the Hajira area and we used to supply an alternative of uh, diclofenac to the veterinary doctors and that is how the cattle which used to die the safe for vultures to eat and we used to carry these carcasses to Hajira and uh, they were dumped over there and 80 to 90 vultures used to come but with the development of Hajira industrial life a lot of high depth sun lines came over there. And the humming sound, magnetic waves were created by high depth sun lines. The high depth sun line is carrying voltage above your own house. And that humming noise broke this virtual world. They left that place around 9 uh, years back. But we were successful to feed them for uh, 5 to 7 years. And this group of vultures is uh, still surviving in Kambati. And you may be wondering how we go ahead in Kambati. Because we have been uh, following them, radio tagging, and all over Gujarat we used to run the uh, vulture survey. Where 
So the other balls like jumps who are diving, cormorants are diving, they come to the larger deep pool and the other balls go to the side pool. And uh, while we were maintaining this lake, water in this lake comes from the canal and all our canals are canal and all our other water bodies are full of water hyacinths. Water hyacinths, this plant. It is a very beautiful plant. If you have seen that plant and the flower of that plant, purple color flower with a yellow lady in the middle. How many of you know from where this plant came? Anyone knows where it is making to or how it came? No? No, it is not a Indian plant. This is a plant from Amazon River. It is a South American native plant brought by British botanist to Indian botanical garden. It is a plant which can grow. It does not require any mud. It can flourish in dirty water. And it can multiply, it can double itself in just 15 days. And Britishers, botanists brought into their botanical garden, into the uh, fountains for their creating. Like botan British made very good botanical gardens wherever they went. And uh, this was a floating plant, a very beautiful looking plant, and a very hardy plant. It just won't die. You have to warm it to die, to kill it. You throw it away anywhere, you are able to do it. <laughs> you put it in a canal, it will get a highway. So the canal reaches to wherever the water is going. And that is how it came into our earlier. That is how it came for Kati. And uh, Kati is having, a, as we know, very big problem with this water hyacinth. It is choking up the more well. Where from where our water is coming. And uh, but this particular plant, as you are architects, I would like to go into a little bit more detail. It is you can treat and clean dirty water with this plant without putting any chemicals. We had a given presentation to our commissioner in our rival. Kapi River is 26 km within passing, uh, the distance is 26 km from the Surat city limit. And uh, about the uh, river, it is all infested with water hyacinth, except for monsoon. When you look at the river, water, water hyacinth goes in the sea and the sea will throw it back onto our beach. Today morning, everyone has been trying to kill the beach. There was a all India beach cleanup day there. But the beach will keep on throwing out waters. It is really too well thrown the other side. And uh, we had uh, done a survey, 26 kilometer survey walking along the river. From 21 points, the big water is entering into our river. Above the falls there. Unfitted seas, Syrian, other things are coming out. Our city has a very good storm water drainage system. But what is a storm water or rain water drainage system? Water should come into it only on the rain. But 365 days water is coming into our storm water day. How? All illegal better connections are there in our strong water health. And our municipality is taking water from this storage, which is having 26 inlet of dirty water, then it purifies it and then it supports growth. What a huge issue. We tell them to why don't you see your 21 strong water rain when it is not raining? And immediately we will find out who has connected it with them. 
और हमें तो एक बैक पर भी देना पड़ता है नहीं हो सिटी में देखते कसम देखते कसम खाली हुआ कोस्ट और से इज नॉट अ स्मार्ट सिटी और से इज नॉट अ ग्रीन सिटी खाली हुआ कोस्ट और ना उनको तो बच्चा स्टूडेंट्स ने अपना गार्डेज डम छे खजो त्या एक फील्ड में भी हो गई एक माते नाइन्थ माते होटल प्राइमरी तो मैं साउंड में इस माँ होटल के इस माँ वो एक ट्रिप हो गई जो खजूर नो गार्बेज डम की वो दिस इज़ द प्रेस वी आर थ्रोइंग आउट आपने सस्टेनेबल सिटी बना हुई चीज़ है उनको बता नहीं मच को तो मैं सवारे तो हमारी कचरा पे दियो कितनों तो हमें बाहर ना दियो जो जहाँ सुधीर जिन्होंन किचन में कचरों तो मैं गाड़ी जाते कंपोस्ट को बाकी लोग प्लास्टिक छह बोटू छह बदबू भी साइड कर रहे हैं तो वही सुनिए बोल रहे हैं गार्बेज डम कचरों में आप लोग गार्बेज डम छह पौनो किलोमीटर लंबो छह और दो किलोमीटर पौनो छह तो हम सब को पूछो मतलब नौ गाय हमारे सारे ब्रांकेल में और दो प्लास्टिक Some of them will flower in monsoon, some in winter, some in summer. 
and those trees are selected in such a way birds will be attracted to it either for nesting or for fruits or for fish so when you do uh, this bird survey and bird count within the region so you do simultaneously uh, on the same time the uh, period of two weeks for the migratory birds it is the february first two weeks so that it is not repeated this uh, this period february first week is such a period birds settle down they are there in the same uh, lake water body if you go in december they are migrating they are still arriving if you go in march and they are going back so the february is the correct time for whole survey of migratory birds local birds you can survey any time because they are always some birds are local migratory in summer they will go to south india winter they go to north india but the majority of the water birds migrating are coming from europe or siberia russia and yeah uh the new perception is that either you are through development or you are through environment if you are only limited resources would you be able to align this two definitely can you elaborate definitely like why can't we share every building be a green building finance is not a problem why can't the trees or the street from the top you should not be able to see the road you should see only greenery just plant trees from the sides of the road from the center of the road and it becomes a canopy and this canopy will be house for so many different biodiversity species birds butterfly insects lizards i will i am always telling our city engineers plant trees not the small flowering shrubs on the road side if you have trees right on the road side that will absorb co2 that co2 will become food for the plants and also the dust will get absorbed over that you can have greenery on multiple layer plant the building in such a way that you can grow trees on the uh, buildings each and every balcony can be a green balcony why can't you design a building which can have one feet or one and a half feet of uh, earth on the balcony and that can be your garden that can be your food forest like you may be knowing there are so many buildings already existing which are having several hundred trees on the skyscraper I think one is there in Italy, somewhere or Singapore. Yeah, Singapore. It can be done. Just uh, nowadays, but what we are doing is try to exploit each and every inch of land available. Why do you want pebble block everywhere? And if you want pebble block, use the coarse pebble block so that water can percolate into the earth. But another thing is now we don't have all. We have basement. We have parking minus two, minus three. Let your parking be there, but on the boundary leave at least ten feet wide green or uh, where water can come for it. If you have a bore well, see that it is recharged. Compulsory it should be recharged. If you design the premises of the building, at least the terrace water should go into the ground, not into the city drainage. That water is, after all, going to be useful to you. And if you make a proper bore well, whatever amount of water falls in your premises can be diverted into the ground, and that will be useful to you. And that is possible. Now we have uh, the small uh, STP plants also. When I think it is compulsory now in our city for hydrants to have a STP. Not yet. Not yet. It should be. It should be made compulsory. Yeah. Very good, sir. Yeah. Okay, I mean, this is the political reason why we are talking. Yes, sir.
If you compare with the cost of the project, I don't think that is much. You can also have your composting from all the building, the biodegradable garbage should be collected and composted within your premises. There is one uh, complex in Pune. Zero is nothing goes out of that complex. More than 400 flights are there. But they have been able to do it. But if somebody starts, then maybe a trend can happen. Because Surat is a city where people can afford such a thing. And they will be proud to say my house is in is in that program. Where there is zero discharge. When I see a building in our city having black color from outside, sorry, there are so many architects, but <laughs> I, I can't stop talking on this because the environment and sustainability is inside my job. When you have a black building in a city like Surat or India, anywhere, it is going to absorb sunlight, it is going to heat itself up, and your AC will repeat double. Simply double. We should have light color buildings. Number that is very easy to do. It is not going to add anything to the project. It is just changing the color. Any light color will do. Any direct sunlight coming into your building have some green color. A four or five story building can easily have green color. You grow some creepers from the top, some creepers from the bottom, have a green curtain, your AC will reduce to 50%. And you will see green away. You will have fresh air, you will have oxygen coming in. <coughs> but somehow the modern architecture of what I see is it is cutting you off from nature. It should be the opposite way. And the vertical wall, green wall, new concept, total bogus. <laughs> plastic babla. <laughs> After all this plastic, life will be 5 to 8 years. It will decay, decay, pollute. And the dabbas, daily it will require watering. Then you do drip, again plastic. Instead of that, just grow creeper. Put a large pot at the bottom or leave a small area for planting. Grow creeper, it can go, it can go to five story high. And watering you will have to do only at one place. When you put that dabas, you have to do watering in every inch and every dabba. Half of the green wall in city in public places are now dry. You can see only the dabba. As soon as the contract is over, as soon as the sponsor runs out of money, it becomes your driver. Soil, 
soil you should enrich it before you do this kind of process. It should be full of biology. That is what he has told in his theory and that is uh, that is what it should be for a fast growth of food. So organic many of uh, food uh, biodegradable uh, material like uh, compost. 50% should be compost. He has told you first give it up and fill up with this kind of material. Obviously when the soil is soft, trees will grow fast. But the species you select should be properly selected. Right now, the reality what people are doing, they will get the plants which are available free of charge from the forest department, from SMC, and plant them as close as possible. And they bring trees just one feet high. That will take three, four years to mature. Bring large trees. In our plantation, we never plant trees less than five feet high. Doesn't matter if it costs 200 rupees. Or at some places we are planting 10 feet high trees. It will cost 500 rupees. But we have to take less care. Because some of our plantations are where no water is available. Water tankers are used for water. But within two years we don't have to take care of the water. And when you plant so close together in Niyamati, one branch is not touching the other branch. When the wind comes, it is a little bit for you. Don't go for Just select your indigenous species, plant them 4 feet, 8 feet. Abundant tree, people tree will require 15 feet. If you go for Dharmar or Kashnar, say 5 feet, 8 feet. If you go for a still smaller species, Konya, uh, this Tikoma, uh, 4 feet. Depending on how much area you are in. If it is a small garden, don't go for that place, go for other Burma or it is good for a uh, blood flower. There are many, many uh, species of Don't 
if we really want to live life which is very close to nature and enjoy, what are those basic steps or you know small steps which we can start adjusting and start living with? You know, Nana, they can follow. It will depend on where your house is located, how it is. Even if it is a flat, you can start with your know, small balcony scoop pots, different pot inside your house, you can put the indoor plants. And the pot can be set that can give you medicinal plants. The one who has no savanna chana ingredients, the one who has no juicy water, or lilisha water, or green water. Flowers, <laughs> Window mask, your phone, your shoe, lady, your shoe, fish, your shoe. Like, there are so many things anyone can do to convert your uh, surrounding into a more livable area. We have a little bit of a lot of people who are very happy. We have a little bit of a lot of people who are very happy. We have a little bit of a lot of people who are very happy. We have a little bit of a lot of people who are very So there might be questions. Uh, okay, I'll ask you. Yeah. 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 कोई ने आह वाइल्डलाइफ में इंटरेस्ट है तो वाइल्डलाइफ इंस्टीट्यूट का कोर्स करा होगा या कोई ने माउंटेनरिंग में इंटरेस्ट है या ना ऊपर कासी माउंटेनरिंग और स्कूल शायद मिला कर नहीं है माउंट पर लेट रही है अन्य लोगों ने मजे में एक्सोप कर दिया ये बड़ा फैमिली फैमिली ये लोगों यार आज पहले लोगों में दे� some of the projects are now CSR sponsors. Earlier we had a lot of problems with fundraising. But now, due to the CSR schemes, there are some industries who are ready to sponsor this kind of research. So now, uh, fund is not such a big problem, but getting proper place to do this kind of project. There is no land available. If you want to plant a tree, there is no land available. In our Surat city, 70% of the food part are not food part, they are tree part. Jar, food part is also given. So, if you have a car, a two-wheeler, or a city, then you can use it. You can use it. If you have a small area, you can use it. If you have a small area, you can use it. If you have a small area, you can use it. If you have a small area, you can use it. एक्टिवेस्ट तो कहाँ चाहिए ना जो तो मैं आपको जुम्मो पॉट आकर भी जाओ ना उपाय आपके लिए है तो मां भी बच्चे आपको गेम करेंगे जाओ तो ना उपाय पर तो चाहिए ना जिसे बताओ बच्चे एक लाइन का है पार्टी इसलिए तो हमारे सेकंड रो लेन मां चालू करो और पर चालू करो तार पर चालू 